Welcome to the Senate Minute. I'm your host, Jesse Cordray. New to our podcast, the Senate Minute is a short audio brief that includes insight into the Indiana Senate Majority Caucus and updates on the legislative actions taken in the General Assembly. In the last installment, we discussed the halfway point in the legislative process needed to successfully pass bills into law. On this edition of the Senate Minute, we will discuss House Bill 1006. Authored by State Representative Greg Sturwald, HB 1006 aims to resolve several issues facing the Indiana Department of Child Services. State Senator Travis Holdman is sponsoring this bill in the Senate. Senator Holdman represents State Senate District 19, which includes Adams, Blackford, Jay, and Wells counties, as well as portions of Grant and Huntington counties. Indiana's Department of Child Services is currently overwhelmed with cases, over 15,000 active cases. What will House Bill 1006 do to address this crisis? Well, I think there are a number of operational issues that we need to take a look at at, at DCS, and I think this sort of gets at the heart of some of those issues. Um, it's very difficult for us to put specific programs in place inside a state agency um, because they're just that's not what the legislature does. Uh, we don't get into the micromanagement piece of what, what a particular state agency does, although we, we can, through funding, and other mechanisms uh, send a message to DCS and to the administration that we think particular um, programs need to need to be looked at and uh, need to be examined that overall will begin to lower the number of cases that we have. Having been in DCS before myself, I was a county director for 11 years back in, before I went back and got my law degree. So I have an understanding of what the problems are and what goes on inside the issue with, uh, with DCS, uh, with the family, and with the court. And having been a deputy prosecutor as well, I understand some of the dynamics that are involved there. As a follow-up to something that you've addressed here, HB 1006 uh, will also set a caseload limit. Uh, mm -hmm. Why may we need those caseload limits and how would caseload limits aid and help the social workers? To be honest with you, I'm not real certain that having a statutory caseload limit is the answer uh, because in most time, most cases uh, we've seen in the last number of years, like four to five years, we've exceeded, the department has exceeded those statutory limits and we've been sued over that uh, a number of times. And so I'm not real certain that that is the answer, but at some point you need a standard that everybody says, this is what we think that needs to be, whether it's 15 to one or 17 to one or 10 to one. Uh, whatever that, that number may be, I think it just provides a benchmark and a goal for us to work towards. But I think it's very difficult, especially in increasing caseload uh, uh, growth, uh, to keep that standard at bay and, uh, and to stay within that standard. It just becomes very difficult because we can't ramp up quick enough to, to have enough family case managers uh, to handle the situation. Right now, I think we're looking at about a 20% turnover rate uh, with family case managers and so we hire a hundred family case managers um, and by the end of the year 20 of them have quit uh, or 20 have quit in the ranks uh, out of that hundred that we hire and so it's a continuous battle to recruit and train and get those people on the job and at the same time deploy the number of people we need that are trained out in the, those counties and around the state to get the job done. So it's, 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 it's a difficult battle that goes on to try to keep under that number, but at some point I think you need a standard. And for no other reason, that may be the best reason that we'd have a caseload count standard. From your personal experience <clears throat> um, and certainly your time as a legislator, why did you sponsor uh, House Bill 1006? Well, because uh, Senator Houchin and I are the two legislators that have actual employment experience with, with DCS and working with families uh, on the human services side. And so uh, having seen the need uh, for legislation uh, to do what we can to enhance the services that we provide to families, but at the same time hold DCS accountable, I think uh, it's, it's a good thing. And uh, I understand the situation, and so I think uh, that's probably one of the reasons that uh, that 1006 and bills that deal with DCS come to me, or I basically try to put my thumbprint on uh, some of that legislation. 
The Senate passed um, Senate Bill 170, which looks into whether certain deaths that occur while children are placed in foster care, um, and if they happen within the home or removed from the home and re-entering, how will House Bill 1006 and Senate Bill 170 work together if signed into law? Well, I think we need to have a good handle on uh, child deaths from the whole infant mortality uh, issue that we that we face with Indiana having such a high infant mortality rate. Um, we seem to have uh, a good plan in place. I commend what the governor has done uh, with regard to infant mortality and trying to deal uh, with that issue. Uh, but I think we just need to make sure that we have good numbers and uh, uh, empirical evidence uh, and the knowledge of what is actually going on inside the state of Indiana uh, is always our best defense and our best tool uh, for future legislation. Thank you for listening. You can subscribe to the Senate Minute on our podcast app or listen at indianasenaterepublicans.com. Click on Media Room and then click the podcast button and listen in. You may also find the Senate Minute on social media when you follow Indiana Senate Republicans on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Indiana Senate GOP, IN Senate Republicans, and at IN Senate GOP. I'm your host, Jesse Cordray. Have a great week.